What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 19th of July in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at my watch list here, taking a look at some stocks, and as you guys can see from a quick glance, my watch list is very red, guys, and the market Marcus today, we're red. We'll get into that, my personal opinion on that in a couple of minutes here. But before we do actually get started with today's video, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, all I ask from you is to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you want to be further connected with our communities, the Strive Smart Facebook group and the Strive Smart Discord group, those are linked down below in the description box. So guys, today was an absolute roller coaster, right? We got a potential hint this morning that the markets could be green. We gapped up, but you can see on the SPX on this five day, five minute chart that that didn't last long. We dumped, ended up closing down $18.50 at the close, down 0.62%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average today, guys, got hit not as hard, but still ended up closing red, down nearly 70 points, down 0.2%. 5%. And the NASDAQ here, guys, got absolutely slaughtered, and it is still falling here, or rather, it fell really for another hour after the market closed, as you guys can see um, in terms of this future here. And right now, it's down 113 points, down 1.43%. So today was an absolute onslaught, guys, in terms of this market. And the pullbacks now, they're starting to look a bit scarier and let's get into some technicals revolving or involving these pullbacks and I'll talk to you guys about my opinion starting off here with the S&P 500. So one pattern that I want to point out here that is kind of reminding me of a pattern that we saw a couple of weeks ago but on a smaller scale is this head and shoulders pattern that we're seeing here on the S&P 500 and let me explain what I mean by this head and shoulders pattern on the 20 day one hour chart. You guys can kind of see it here. It's pretty obvious and pretty evident the way um, that this head and shoulders pattern is formed here. It, or rather, it has formed, right? You guys can see the left shoulder is here at about $29.95. We got a pop, a pullback, another pop, and another pullback making that left shoulder. And then when we broke out of that $29.95 level of resistance, we held it as a new support. We went on that rally for all-time highs, and then we pulled back drastically that formed the head of the pattern and now we got one pop-up day on the 18th which was yesterday and today we gapped up again and a lot of us were thinking I was thinking okay we may actually rally from here but we actually failed to hold 3,000 which I've been preaching on this channel is a very significant level here that 29.95 to 3,000 spot we failed to hold it we actually got rejected by that 50 SMA on the 20 day one hour chart and you guys can see how heavily we dumped from there forming that right shoulder right and let me explain what I'm talking about here um, and for those of you all that were watching the channel a couple of months ago before we actually saw the full on dump we were calling a head and shoulders pattern here and let me just really zo uh, zoom in on this and drop a comment down below if you actually remember this if you watch the videos um, back during this time period I was talking about the head and shoulders pattern, but it was actually stretched out a bit longer, about a month, a month and a half, uh, you know, time frame here, as you guys can see. But all in all, it was a left shoulder. We popped for the head. We were hitting those all time highs here and we pulled back. We popped again. We failed to get above that 50 SMA, which honestly would have been a breakout spot, and then we sold off all the way down to 27.22, and this was actually the month that we sold off that bigger sell-off in the month of May. I know you guys remember that. That was literally about 
45 to 60 days ago when we dumped uh, when we dumped this far down. So this is um, you know reminding me of this pattern that we sold off at um, you know sold off on, on in the past couple of months. This pattern that we're seeing right now. So what I would like to see for a potential sell off like maybe this one. I'm not sure if it's going to be this drastic, but what this pattern is showing me is that we might be seeing a sell off here, especially if we dump below this 50 SMA and 2975 and 2975 guys is a very key level as well like we talked about in yesterday's video we actually held that level above the 50 SMA yesterday and the fact that we are holding that today gives me some hope that we could bounce on top of that and maybe get out of this head and shoulders pattern but if we break this level and get down to 2950 2900 you know this head and shoulders pattern is going to be pushing us down to the point where it's going to be looking very similar to this when we dumped and started to push down, right? So if we do break, guys, you know, we may be pulling back and seeing a correction, maybe down to 2,900, which is the 180 SMA, or we may be pulling down all the way to 2,800 again, which would be quite the sizable correction. That would be, in my opinion, a very healthy, healthy correction in the S&P. Since the S&P has been running so much, much in the past month and a half guys so in my opinion if we did pull down to 2800 that would be quite the healthy pullback and down from there you know that at that point if we went below 2800 and we went to 2730 that would be a very very big pullback I don't know if we're going to pull back that much but if we did and we broke 2700 that's going to be a point in time where it's going to look a very similar to the December pullback that we experienced a couple months months back and I know a lot of you guys remember how bloody those days were so let's not get ahead of ourselves though let's see it and uh, take it day by day let's see if it breaks these support levels before we talk about these ones but overall that is what I'm looking at right now on the S&P 500 guys it is not looking too good and especially if we break those moving averages that I talked about so the Dow Jones industrial average you're seeing a similar pattern here right you're seeing a a resistance at about $27,400. This is actually a double top. And if we go out to the 184 hour, you guys can see we're actually still trending above this little trend line that I have here. That's one positive thing about this pattern. But again, the double top is a negative. A double top usually um, points us to thinking there, there could be a drop here. Double top means it's a, it's the top of a pattern and we may be seeing a bearish move from there. Just like a double bottom is a bullish move if we pop uh, you know, upwards from that. So a couple of levels I'm watching here on the Dow are the 50 SMA and this trend line that I have drawn out here on the 184 hour chart. So again, this didn't experience as much of a pullback as the SPX. So the technicals weren't as much affected, but they did drop and we are starting to see a bit of a bearish tendency here, um, you know, especially if we do gap down even more this upcoming week. But taking a look at some other time frames, you know, again, the 20 day one hour, you can see we're technically at a higher low right now from the previous. So the uptrend is intact still. If we're talking technically right now on the 10 day 30 minute, you guys can see the 180 SMA is a strong support. If we break that, that's going to be a very, very bearish sign there. And if we take a look at the five day five minute you guys can already see that we are starting to show um, some bearish moves here the 50 SMA is about to cross below the 180 SMA the green line is about to cross below the yellow line which is a very bearish move we're starting to see the candlesticks are dumping below the moving average supports that once were supports now they're looking like resistances so these are a couple of signs that are pointing me towards believing we might have some more red here coming up guys and on the NASDAQ, let's take a look at how bad this is looking. On the 5 day 5 minute, it's a clear descending pattern, right? Moving averages, they're acting as resistances. We're making lower lows, we're making lower 
highs, guys. If we take a look at the 10-day 30, you guys can see the kind of a, you know, descending pattern here. It's not really a double top in a sense. It's kind of a head and shoulders as well. Left shoulder, head when we hit that $8,000 all-time high, and then the right shoulder now that we're dumping very, very, very aggressively. And on the smaller time frame right here, you can see 7800 is a support, so I'm interested in seeing our buyers going to come in here, especially since we're over um, sold here that could be something interesting to see if people start to buy this big old dip here if we go back to the 20 day one hour or to the 20 day one hour rather you can see we did break the 180 sma support we broke this trend line of this um you know uptrend here but we're about to test again that 7800 level i'd be interested to see if people buy up this dip so going back to the 180 or to the 180 i don't know why i keep saying back because we were never at the 180 but now that we're at the 180 Let's take a look at this, and you can see it more evident here, guys. We were uptrending, higher highs, higher lows. We hit 8,000. We failed to pop here to break out to make another higher high, which, which, which would have been the continuation of the uptrend. We failed to do that. We actually got hit. We're looking like we're making that uh, head and shoulder pattern. It's looking like a double top as well. And now we're dumping. So again, guys, 7,800. I'm looking at that level. If we're taking a look at the 184 hour in perspective here, um, you know, in general, you know, this 180 SMA, this yellow line, that's a strong support here as well. Take a look at that. Uh, you know, be sure that you know and understand that if we break that level, that's going to be very, very bad um, for the Nasdaq. That's going to be a very big technical break. And uh, from there, we could, in my opinion, expect more red potentially. So that's the overall market update for today. A lot of things started to get ugly today. Let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think about this? I would love to know. Let me know what are your thoughts on the market at this particular time period. I love talking to you guys on in the comments, and I respond to every single one of you guys, um, and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's talk about very quickly now uh, a trading update, and I'm sure you guys can probably guess it the nasdaq today did awful like we just talked about a minute ago and what does well when the nasdaq is selling off like i talk about a lot on this channel that is sqqq guys and sqqq was a straight breakout move today pretty much for the entire day um and you guys can see it right here a couple of days ago we hit 31 dollars. we popped up as the market sold off the markets started to rebound a bit which you guys saw as we saw the gap up this morning that brought down um you know sqqq here and then we got the double bottom and the breakout as the nasdaq was selling off very aggressively like we just talked about right and that start uh the sell-off on the nasdaq actually started at about really 7 50 a.m actually more towards like you know 4 40 a.m 5 o'clock a.m eastern standard if we're really taking a look at when it started this morning in terms of the futures and you guys can really see that right we we gapped up to 79 72 sold off lower low popped up lower high sold off and started to slip aggressively as the markets opened and we just continuously made lower lows and lower highs and really the premise of my trade here was as we popped up started to test the 50 sma to see if we were going to break break out of there and recover. This is very similar to my trade yesterday. You know, the fact that we didn't break out and recover, the fact that we got rejected again and dumped aggressively, this gave me the go on putting a position, a smaller start out position in SQQQ. And you guys can see it even better on the one day, one minute, right? Pretty much from 3.30 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know, we were falling, falling, falling. And I pretty much just caught it on the pop, we didn't break out. We got in SQQQ as it continued the downtrend. And I'm not sure, it, no, it wasn't this exact uh, uh, drop here because this was at 11 a.m. I actually got in this more towards the market open. So we gapped up. You guys can see this is actually when I got in, I believe. We popped up. We tested that 180 SMA. Yup, at about 10 a.m. This sounds right. At, at 10 a.m., you guys can see we started to get rejected at that 180 SMA here on the, uh, uh, the one day, one minute. We didn't 
break out. We didn't break out of there to bullish to make a bullish move, a bullish pattern. We got rejected. We dumped, which gave me the go on SQQQ. So SQQQ, you guys can see at about 10 o'clock, we were pulling back a little bit. We didn't fully break out yet, but we were breaking out of the 180 SMA, which is a very good sign of the start of a breakout. We pulled back, we touched it, and then we broke out. And that is when I took the position, guys, literally at around 10 a.m. Eastern Standard. And I wrote it up to about, uh, I think once it started dumping here into the 32s, lower 32s, because I held it up here. It was a bit overbought. I was being a bit greedy here, to be honest, guys. I didn't want to um, take the profit. I thought it was going to continue to pop up, but we got that pullback, and that's when I actually uh, ended up selling out of the position. So from about $31.75 up to about $32.03, it was under a 1% trade. It was about a 0.9% trade. And sure, if I were to hold or if I were to uh, you know, not sell at that point, let's say I held it for the rest of the day, I would have been up like 5%. 4 or 5%, but the name of the game, in my opinion, guys, is to be consistent, lock in a small profit, whatever it may be, 0.5%, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0.6, whatever it may be, lock that in and be consistent with that. In my opinion, it's way better to lock in a smaller profit consistently than it is to chase and maybe get a 5% profit one day. The next day, you chase again, then you get caught in a red trade, you lose 3%, and then you try to chase again, and that's just a very... Um, you know, bad cycle to get in. And trust me, I've been in that cycle before and I've learned from it. And now I've adopted this strategy of just being way more conservative and way more consistent and not trying to just chase all of these trades, right? So that's kind of um, a little... Uh, you know, side note there, a little side tangent, but I do think that is valuable, especially to the beginners out there that may be watching this video. So let's talk about a couple of stocks very quickly on my watch list. I'm not going to break them down too in depth here because I don't want the video to be too long. And by the way, if you guys actually want me to talk about a stock or an ETF in Sunday's video, any, uh, any particular stock, whatever the ticker symbol may be, drop a comment down below. Let me know and I'll get to it in Sunday's video. But a couple that I wanted to talk about today, um, very quickly, let's just run through the watch list. Uh, gold, gold didn't make much of a move today. We actually hit a high of 1454, and you guys can see we're down about a buck 60 right now, down about 0.11%. The interesting thing on gold right now is we're actually trending above the old resistance, which is now a new support at around 1425. And you guys can see how that's been a resistance, and once we broke out, that is is really been a bullish move that I think, and I talked about in yesterday's video, this could get us to a potential 1500 per ounce gold, 1550 based on some longer term technicals. But before we do get to that, you know, and I talked about this in yesterday's video, we may be seeing some fluctuation in gold's price. We may be pulling back. And today, we actually did get that pullback. And now, this could open up an interesting entry point on JNUG, I believe, if we do hold this as a new support support and then continue to pop up and potentially fill up to $1,500 or 1550 And let me show you guys that $1,500, $1,550 spot that I'm talking about because you may be thinking I'm crazy. The fact that we broke out of 1412 it pretty much entered us into a new channel where gold's next resistance is 1550 So that's what I'm talking about here on a technical basis. That is a spot we could definitely fill in, right? We could definitely fill that up so gold that is what i'm looking at um you know gold j nug these are going to be very very good if the markets continue to drop guys you know in my opinion if the markets drop things start to get volatile people might be pumping in money into gold because it's considered a safe haven and opportunities might also open up in sqqq which we talked about again you know this goes up whenever the nasdaq is selling off so if this continues if the nasdaq continues continues to fall, this could be a very good play, right? And the other one is the SPXS, which goes 
up whenever the S&P, the SPX um, falls, right? So you have options here. You can trade ETFs that trade on the NASDAQ. You can trade ETFs that trade on the SPX, right? You have a lot of uh, options, um, and there's a lot more than just these ones that I talk about. These are just the ones that I personally like. So do your research, guys. You know, there's a bunch of other ones out there that are worth taking a look at. But for me, I'm watching SQQQ. I'm watching SPXS. And if things get volatile, you guys saw the VIX was up nearly a dollar today. You know, TVIX is going to be one that I'm watching, which is a volatility um, ETF. It goes up typically when the markets are selling off heavily. And whenever the, you know, the markets are volatile, right? Watch the VIX here. The VIX does well. You know, TVIX typically does well. And I'm not sure why 1.69%. It must have opened on the gap down, right? Yep, that's what I'm thinking. It opened on a gap down to $14, and it did make a pretty massive move of about 8%, but it only registered as 1.69% due to that gap down. So that makes sense. Okay, so TVIX, um, that's definitely one that I'm going to be watching here. You know, Microsoft... Let's just run through some tech. Tech did pretty poorly today, although Microsoft um, did do well and hit an all-time high this morning. But Microsoft's on the pullback. I'm watching that one. Um, you know, Apple. Apple was down $3 today, 1.5%. That's a sizable pullback. Um, Amazon down 0.7%. That's a pretty good pullback as well. This seems like it could be a temporary top here on Amazon. Um, Facebook down $2.42. This could be a temporary top as well. We hit those resistance is at about $200, $205 that we struggled to get above a couple of months ago. I know you guys remember that when we hit the earnings report and we hit that very good um, stride there in Facebook stock. Google is down $16 today. This one's still struggling, guys, compared to all the other, um, you know, FANG stocks, tech stocks, the big stocks out there. Um, Google's actually doing pretty poorly compared to those. And of course, Netflix dropped another $10 today, guys, 3.11%. So we may be seeing Netflix here dumping into a $200 territory. Let me know what you guys think about Netflix stock, actually. Let me know down below. I would love to know. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what stocks you want me to talk about, what ETFs you want me to talk about, what do you think about the market, what stocks are you watching. I would love to know. And subscribe to the channel channel if you haven't done so already hit that notification bell join our strive smart discord group chat and our strive smart facebook group all of those links are down below in the description box so i hope you all did well today i hope you all have a great weekend i appreciate you taking your time to watch this video it does mean a lot to me i'll catch you all in the next video peace out